Hello and welcome to Timeless Truths, a sermon podcast from St. Mark Ministries in Greater Green Bay, Wisconsin. This week we continue our series, Fresh Start. In episode 61, let's join Pastor Ben Reichel as we learn how to stay connected to Jesus. So open up your heart, open up your Bible, and let's dig in to these timeless truths. I am not a gardener. My parents had vegetable gardens all while I was growing up. We grew the normal corn, peas, beans, carrots, tomatoes, all the good, those good things. My grandparents on my dad's side have had vegetable gardens and immaculate flower beds and a variety of berry bushes for as long as I can remember. And I'm pretty sure they're still taking care of all of those different gardens well into their 90s. I've grown up around gardens and gardeners my whole life. I even tried to plant my own garden for the first three years when we lived in West Bend. But I think out of those three years, we maybe had one harvest that was somewhat passable and edible that wasn't a complete bust. But between coaching summer weightlifting, which was four out of the five days a week, summer football camps, having two young kids at home, and then having to start a new football season and a new school year every fall, our harvests were less than what we were hoping for. I was really busy. My wife was really busy. Our family was too young. There was too much shade over the garden because of the trees in our backyard. It didn't get enough sunlight. The soil just needed way too much attention and effort in order to produce something edible. It just didn't work. Now, all of those are are just excuses, right? I could have made it work. But if I'm being completely honest, I just don't like gardening. That's really what it comes down to, right? Um, I have never enjoyed gardening. Picking weeds is not stress relief for me. It is not relaxing. In fact, I think it does the exact opposite. Gardening has not become a personal hobby or a passion of mine. It's just not my idea of a good time. Because to me, it seems like a whole lot of extra work Extra time and energy and effort and blood and sweat, and in my case, a few tears, for not a lot of return. It just doesn't seem worth it. So from my personal experience, I would rather go to the grocery store or a farmer's market or one of those roadside vegetable stands, and I will pay someone for the products of their passion and hard work. Now, I know I may have upset some of you because I know we have master gardeners in this congregation and you guys love planting and harvesting and growing beautiful flower beds. I love the De Pere campus because we can walk through all of those immaculate flower beds and then we have a vegetable garden in the back and I don't know how you people do it. I don't have a green thumb. Okay, I know some, I know the basics of planting and watering and fertilizing and growing and harvesting. I just don't know enough. Okay, you have the green thumb. I have whatever the opposite of a green thumb is. I can look at a plant and it will die. It's it's just, it's not what I can do, kind of like fishing. I I don't do fishing either. So whether you have a green thumb and you are a master gardener, or if you're like me, I think we can all appreciate and understand the picture that Jesus uses from John chapter 15. So if you have your Bibles open, you have the Bible app open, go back to John 15. We're going to focus in on verse 5. But Jesus uses an illustration from everyday life. The, The first century Jewish people were a very agricultural society. So they had crops and vineyards and farms all over the place. So he took an example from everyday life to make sense of a deep spiritual truth 
about how we are connected to Jesus and our relationship to him. John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Sounds pretty simple, right? It's plant 101, gardening 101. You have a vine, you have some branches, you get some fruit. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, we produce fruit. As long as we are connected to the vine, the sustainer and the one who gives us spiritual nourishment, we will be able to live that life of Christian character and integrity that Pastor Parlo mentioned last week as we began this sermon series, Fresh Start. Even though it's a very simple concept, an illustration to understand, sometimes it's very difficult to put into practice. One reason it's so difficult to put into practice, at least in my opinion, is that when we look at the Christian life and what it takes to be connected to the vine, sometimes we just don't want to do it. We look at the time and the energy and the effort and the blood, sweat, maybe even tears that it takes to remain connected to Jesus, but it looks like all of that is for very little return, at least in this life. Especially in a society which is growing more and more hostile to Christians and Christianity. We might think it would be easier to distance ourselves or maybe even disconnect ourselves from the vine because we think that's going to make our lives just that much easier, that much less stressful. Plus, we're really busy already. This is just going to add another thing to that long to-do list. And we have so many other things we have to worry about. Another reason why we may not want to put in the work and the effort that is required to stay connected to the vine is because we've convinced ourselves that we're doing pretty well on our own. Maybe we don't need Jesus. Our selfishness has blinded us to our true spiritual condition. We think we don't need Jesus because, well, maybe we have our life pretty well put together. We can't complain more than anybody else, and we've got this false sense of comfort from our personal or professional achievements and fulfillments. So when we look at our lives, maybe we've become a little bit too self-sufficient, self-reliant, and maybe we're looking at our own self-righteousness. And because we're doing that, we've almost made Jesus optional in our lives. Until, of course, we we really need him. That's our fatal mistake. If we convince ourselves that Jesus is optional, we fail to realize just how much we need him every single minute of every single day. Day. Jesus is not optional. He is the source of our life. In fact, He is our life. He is the vine that nourishes and supports all of the branches that are connected to Him. He is the one that produces those good fruits, those good works through you. Because you have no power to produce any type of good fruit on your own. Apart from Jesus, you cannot do anything good in God's eyes. Neither can I. No one can. Because God's standard is perfection. Even those things which we would consider good, or maybe that the world would consider good, philanthropy and volunteerism and service projects and charities and donations and all those good things, if they are done apart from Jesus, they're not good in God's eyes. Because his standard is 
perfection. He is the one who determines good and bad. But in our sinful nature and because of the world that we live in and because of the devil himself, we have tried to redefine what good and bad are to suit our own purposes and agendas. But God sees things differently than human beings do. His standard remains perfection. He doesn't change his standards depending on his mood, his feelings, or the day, or the person. That standard is perfection for everyone. And you and I have no ability, no capability to approach that level of perfection even on our best day. So how can we remedy this situation? Is it really about working a little bit harder? Is it really about putting in more time and energy and effort? Is it about weeding out all of those sinful choices and bad habits that we've made in an attempt to clean our lives up just enough so that when God looks at us, he at least sees that we're trying Is that what it's all about? Absolutely not. There's nothing that we can do to fix our spiritual reality. There's no amount of weeding or pruning or watering or fertilizing or tilling that we could do on ourselves and on our own lives that will enable us to produce more good fruits. And there's nothing that we can do in producing those fruits that will produce enough that we can present them to God to try and buy our way or barter our way into his heaven. You and I have no capability to do anything on our own of eternal value. If we keep this plant analogy going, on our own, we should be chopped down. We should be dug out. We should be thrown into a pile. We should be burned. That's why we need Jesus. That's why we need to be connected to that vine because he is the source of our life. In fact, he is our life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He tells us. He doesn't try to sell you on his seven proven habits to make your life better. He doesn't claim to have the secret to a happier, healthier you. You don't have to pay a monthly subscription to his streaming service so that you have access on demand to all of his seminars to make your life better or to live your best life. He is the vine. He is your life. Apart from him, you can do nothing and you are nothing. If you had a tree in your front yard and you chopped off one of those branches and just let that branch stay in your front yard, what's going to happen? Eventually the leaves are going to start to shrivel up. A few more days, they're going to get all crunchy and crispy and eventually fall off. It's not too long before that branch is completely dried out and completely dead. Then you just have a dead branch in your yard. What are you going to do with that? You're probably going to chop it up. You might use it for firewood. There is not a day that goes by when we do not need Jesus. We might pretend. We might fake it. We might work really, really hard on our own to get through. But the truth is, we wouldn't last a day without Jesus. We have to be connected to him because there's no such thing as working hard enough or being good enough in God's eyes. His standard is perfection, and it's perfection or nothing. James 2 verse 10 tells us, For whoever keeps the whole law yet stumbles at just one point, is guilty of breaking all of it. When you look at your life and you realize just how often you have stumbled, 
and how often you have broken that standard of perfection, you have to admit that you need someone else to fix this for you. You need someone else to fix you. You need someone else to fix your relationship with God. Remember, John 15, verse 5. Jesus himself says, Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, we are dead. Pastor Paul Washer from Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, California, said it this way. We should never tell a man that he only needs to add Christ to make his life complete. He must be told that without Christ, he has no life. Jesus isn't just an accessory to your life when it feels good or looks good to be a Christian. He's not just an add-on when it's convenient for you. Jesus is not optional. He is our all. He is our life. Apart from Jesus, we are dead. But the good news is that through faith, we are connected to Jesus. And we do have life. We have his life. We have his resurrection. We have his perfection and his righteousness. We must be connected to Jesus. We must be connected to that vine if we are to have a living faith and to produce those good fruits. Jesus is the vine. He is our life. He is the pioneer. He is the perfecter. He is the author of our faith. He has come into this world that we might have life and have it to the full, not just now, but after now as well. He is the seed that produces more seeds and more branches and more fruits. Jesus is not optional. He is our all. He is our life. All of this means that if we are to have this fresh start, if we are to live that life of Christian character and integrity, we must be connected to Jesus. Then and only then will we produce those good fruits, those good works that follow from faith. And hopefully by now you understand that when we talk about producing good fruits, we're not talking about berries or cherries or tomatoes or whatever the case may be. We're talking about those good works that flow from faith. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, we produce fruit. The only way branches can produce fruit is if they are connected to the vine. The only way branches are good and beneficial is if they produce fruit. So producing good works and producing those fruits are not optional in the lives of Jesus' followers. In fact, we are commanded to do good works. In Ephesians 2 verse 10, Paul tells us, We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We have been saved by God's grace, through faith, not by our own deeds, not by our own works or energy or effort. And because we are saved by God's grace, we don't get to live however we want to live. We don't get to do whatever we want to do. God has designed each and every one of us individually to do certain good works that only you are designed to do. No one else can do them. And God expects you to love and serve your neighbor, putting that faith into action with those good works, those good fruits of faith. One of our St. Mark partners Tad Shubring, I don't know if he's here, but I'm going to give him a shout out. He shared something on Facebook last week that I knew would be a perfect fit for this sermon. I was always told by my English teachers, and I have several teachers in my extended family, and I'm supposed to cite my sources, so I'm not going to take credit for this. Tad shared it from a woman named Joan Carson on June 25th. It was her post. Tad reposted it. I'm sharing it with you now. Here is what that post 
said. So if you want to go back, you can check this on Tad's Facebook page. When God wanted to create fish, he spoke to the sea. When God wanted to create trees, he spoke to the earth. But when God wanted to create man, he turned to himself. Then God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. If you take the fish out of water, it will die. And when you remove a tree from the soil, it will also die. Likewise, when man is disconnected from God, he dies. God is our natural environment. We were created to live in his presence. We have to be connected to him because it is only in him that life exists. Let us stay connected to God. We recall that water without fish is still water, but fish without water is nothing. The soil without a tree is still soil, but the tree without soil is nothing. God without man is still God, but man without God is nothing. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Timeless Truths. Whether you're a first-time listener or a long-time listener, we're glad you could join us. For more information or to support the work of St. Mark Ministries, check out our website at stmarkministries.com. Be sure to tune in next week as we continue our series, Fresh Start. And remember, you matter and you are loved.